Steve Davis is a principal at Canizero Cawthorn Davis, a leading regional healthcare design firm. And in 2003, Steve received the Toe Sigma Delta Silver Award from Mississippi State and was later recognized as the College of Architecture's Alumnus of the Year in 2004. So he and his partner, Danny um, Cawthorn, and their staff provide planning, architecture, and interior design services throughout the southeastern United States. Let's welcome him to the podium. Um, luck is where opportunity meets preparation. And what is preparation? When I was 14 years old, I helped my uncle clear a, an overgrown pasture that was full of uh, small pine trees and privet and things like that. Every morning, my uncle would come out and sit down and sharpen his axe, and I would get my dull axe and proceed to start chopping. Of course, he was able to clear a lot more land than I was just because he took that few minutes every morning to make sure his axe was sharp. And that's what preparation means. That was one of my first early lessons uh, in terms of blisters on my hands. Uh, planning is what we can do to make a difference, and not just in the healthcare industry, but really in every endeavor in a business. It may seem on the front end there's very little reward, but in the back end, it makes opportunities become reality. I'm an architect and I'm surrounded by three planners, and, but we all have a common interest in creating good places, uh, places that support people and business and life. The, uh, our firm focuses on health care, and many times we are coming in on the back end, implementing a plan that was developed by other people. In this instance, I was able to come in with Bob Barber and Orion and uh, the county of Madison and uh, Canton to uh, develop a plan. And I also had the uh, opportunity to work with uh, Gerald Blessy at Tradition on the health and learning community there. So those have been really uh, important uh, opportunities, and I would like to thank everyone involved, particularly Tom Miller, who is uh, keeping a low profile today, but he had a lot to do with getting us involved. The proper uh, development works with the needs of the community. It doesn't begin with a building or a street or a project. It begins with community involvement and meets a community's needs. Really, as Bob said and these other guys have said all day, is we need everyone's involvement and everyone's participation to make some goals. Uh, many of our communities today result from planning that is only designed around a car. And it's how quick can we get this car from point A to point B, and how many cars can we park? It has very little to do with a human being and what makes our lives successful. Uh, you've heard a lot of talk about placemaking and about quality of life, and so we need a plan in this instance and every other instance that recognize cars are one element, but community needs, pedestrian spaces, gathering spaces for people, people, places for events are perhaps more important. We don't go to Europe to go look at their parking lots. The great spaces encourage neighborliness. neighborliness. They encourage interaction, they encourage safety. Uh, they have identities that are uh, important. Uh, we have one great space there, and I'll let you decide which it is. Uh, the, the Madison uh, healthcare plan takes that vision of creating a great space, great places, and runs with it. We were actually able to use a charrette recently done by the city of Canton with Mississippi Main Street to, as a beginning point, and uh, that was a great opportunity to use their documents. The, and again, as these guys have pointed out, these, these plans need to evolve. They can't remain dead plans sitting on a shelf. With every opportunity and every generation, they're gonna, these spaces are going to evolve. And how, this, how this can uh, affect a healthcare organization in particular, because as an architect, I get involved on specific projects. In uh, healthcare facilities, the usual design approach is to create a giant floor plan that's designed around efficiency. Little 
regard for the user experience of a visitor, a family member, or a patient, there are some exceptions to the rule that are being developed now that I hope become more common. In uh, Americas, Georgia, the Phoebe Sumter Medical Center was destroyed by a tornado in 2007. Their new plan is built around a green space. And I don't know of any uh, of us that are familiar with a hospital that has a park in the center of the development. They broke their building down instead of that enormous first floor that is uh, thousands of square feet and a maze of corridors. They broke the building into four different buildings, surrounded a park, and put sidewalks in to try to promote people to get on the, on the, uh, on the grounds. We all know our society, we have, are less fit than we should be. We're more obese than we should be. How do we promote people to get out and about? And what can we do um, on a smaller scale? You know, the, after a day like today when we hear these grand visions, I like to say, well, what can we do tomorrow, right? What can we do tomorrow? Um, it, uh, we can go back to our communities and we can find out what they need tomorrow. We can make our healthcare providers understand what, what we need, what our communities need. Uh, Lady of the Lake at, in uh, Baton Rouge understood that we have an obese and unfit population. They also understand that uh, the families of our healthcare patients have lots of time on their hands. I know we've all been there, sitting in that hospital room for days so they put in a walking trail. They have a walking trail outside the building and inside the building that's marked with quarter mile markers and benches. That's all it takes to make the beginnings of a space. The, uh, that's a thing we can all do there. Every hospital in the state can do that. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank Governor Bryant, his staff, particularly Trey, and the legislature for starting this discussion about the future of healthcare in Mississippi and I challenge all of us to make it real. Thank you.